I've been doing this for a long time. Content creation for emulation, retro handhelds, retro gaming, hundreds of guides, hundreds of written guides on my website, all of that. The one constant over all of these years, besides people asking, where do you get ROMs, is what the hell are BIOS files? It doesn't matter what video I do, it doesn't matter how often I explain it, none of that really matters. People are still confused. So today, it's gonna be all about BIOS files. Where to find them, what they are, what they do, the reason they're important, all of it. Today, BIOS files for everything. I have the flip two in this video for some reason. So first up, what exactly is a BIOS and what are BIOS files? And let's just pretend that the flip two that I have here today is my PlayStation 1. I tried to find my PlayStation 1, I have no idea where it is. But let's pretend this is a PlayStation 1, okay? With the PlayStation 1, you had an operating system. You had to load up the CD, you had an operating system that would read that CD and then spit it back to you in the form of a game and you'd be able to play it. BIOS files are essentially the exact same thing except in a file format. So they would take that operating system, that software, all of it, throw it into a file and emulators can use it now to emulate that original hardware so that you can play those games. This is the simplified explanation. So I like using PlayStation 1 as an example because in order for you to properly emulate PlayStation 1 on any device, you need the PlayStation 1 BIOS file. RetroArch needs it, DuckStation needs it, EPSXE needs it, all of them need it to properly emulate PlayStation 1. Now for legal reasons, emulators don't include BIOS files with them. So it's something that you have to provide. The reason being is they sort of expected you to dump the actual firmware from your original PlayStation 1 to your computer and that's what you would use. Now it's 2025, nobody does that. That's the expectation from developers for emulators. But again, nobody does it. They're not gonna include BIOS files ever because of legal reasons, and we're always going to need to just do one simple Google search to grab them and put them in the emulator to use it. Now, if you're curious what happens if you try and load a game without a BIOS file for, let's say, PlayStation 1 again, you're usually gonna get a black screen. For other systems, it might be a white screen. In either event, your game doesn't actually work. It doesn't load, nothing plays, and you're left there scratching your head like, what's wrong with this emulator? Is it broken? Now. Sometimes a game will load and you'll be like, ha Joey, what do you even know? My game's working, I don't need a BIOS file. What's happening there is a lot of times they include a high level emulation BIOS or HLE BIOS. Basically they're using software to mimic a BIOS, but you won't get the same level of compatibility. You won't get the same level of performance. Some games will work, a lot of other games will not and you'll be left scratching your head again as to why Crash Bandicoot is working, but Final Fantasy isn't, for example. I just used a random example. I don't remember what games actually work with HLE, BIOS, for some... either way, it's not something that matters. Now, the other hiccup is BIOS files are actually region-based as well. So let me use the PS2 as an example. Let's say that you want to play a PS2 game from Europe or Asia. You would need a European or Asian BIOS file to use the firmware from those regions to play the game. This is likely a bit more of a rare scenario. I don't know how many of you are actually playing games outside of the USA region, for example, but there are some scenarios where you have to patch a ROM hack, like Kingdom Hearts, for example, with Final Mix, I believe is one of them, where you need the Asian ROM version to be able to patch it. So there are some scenarios like that. However, besides all of that, there is another use case for BIOS files on systems where it isn't required to run those games. An easy example is the Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance. But this applies to a lot of other systems as well. Without having the BIOS files for those systems, you won't get the cool startup intro that you remember and that you love from when you had a Game Boy. But if you had those BIOS files for those systems, you would get that intro boot up experience. So while it's not exactly necessary to run the games, all the games will run just fine, it's an added benefit to get that just nostalgic experience. So tying this all together, you need BIOS files in a lot of scenarios to properly emulate some systems, mostly CD-based systems, and 
BIOS files are just firmware that are in a file. So tying it all together, that's the easiest way. Now, the next question you're gonna be asking is, okay, I get all of that, but what systems actually need BIOS files? And that's a great question. The easiest answer for me to say would be that it would be mostly CD-based systems. It's not exactly true, but it's the easiest way to put it. So your Sega CDs, your Sega Dreamcast, Sega Saturn, your Sony PlayStation 1, Sony PlayStation 2 are the main big ones. But then you get into a bit more obscure ones like the Atari Lynx or the Satellaview, or you might even run into scenarios under a system where they need a special BIOS just to play King of Fighters or like some random other game. So it gets very confusing and I can see why. Now there is an awesome wiki that has a total list of systems and it will tell you if the BIOS files are required. And this is all on the Game Tech Wiki website. Funny enough, all of the download links are there too. So if you need them, it is a one-stop shop for everything BIOS. If I get any questions about where to download BIOS files, I'm gonna know that you didn't watch the video. Okay, so at this point, you understand what BIOS files are. You understand the need for them. You understand which systems required them, but you might be confused as to where do you put them? What do you do with them once you get them? You, you downloaded a zip file, you extracted it, you have a bunch of files, what do you do next? And also, what is the best version? There's like a hundred files here, what do I do with these? So let's tackle this one by one. The first question is where do you put the BIOS files? And this is different for every emulator. Let's use RetroArch for a quick example just because that is the most popular multi-system emulator and it's likely why you're here. For RetroArch, it's actually very easy and it's the same across all operating systems. Inside of the RetroArch folder, there is a system folder and inside of the system folder is where you can dump all of your BIOS files. Now, speaking to the retro handhelds community specifically, some custom firmware options have different spots of where they want the BIOS files to be. For example, if you have MEOS, it needs to be in the MEOS slash BIOS folder. That's where they want them. Then you'll have Nully, and then you have other ones, and they're all kind of different, but the one constant is all of them on their websites will tell you exactly where you want them to put them, and it's up to you to put them there. But let's be honest, if you're watching today's guide, the easiest part of today is knowing where to put those BIOS files because you've likely watched a guide, probably from me, where I'm like, this is where you put the BIOS files. And then you're left scratching your head like, what is a BIOS file? At least now you know all of that and now you know where to put them. So that's at least the easy part of today. Now, other emulators like DuckStation or NetherSX2 or PCSX2 will ask you where they are. So you can just point the emulator to the folder that has those BIOS files. Personally, I like to have them grouped up in a BIOS folder for easy organization, and it makes it simple. But let's talk about the best version for each system when it comes to BIOS files. This is a tough question, and this is likely what trumps up a lot of people. Let's look at the PS1 BIOS download from the Game Tech Wiki from earlier. Inside of it, you're going to see a few folders. Going back to our early conversation about regions, NTSC-J is Japan, NTSC-UC is basically North America, and PAL-E is Europe. Inside of each folder, there's a bunch of different BIOS files, all different versions. So what's the best? Now, the easiest way to sort all of this, if you don't want to think about it and you are tired of today's video already, just grab them all, throw them into a big BIOS folder, and then use that. Whenever you get to a RetroArch system folder that needs BIOS, copy all those files and throw it in there. Let the emulator handle it. That is the easy way to do this, where you don't have to think about it. You have bills on your mind, you have mortgage payments, who cares about BIOS files? Just copy all of them into one big folder and paste it into the RetroArch system folder and off you go, you are done. It's very easy to overthink this. And for 99% of you, the BIOS file doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that you have the best version of it. What matters is you have at least one so that you can play your games. There are very different differences between them, but not enough for you to worry about. But Joey, I really want to know what is the best BIOS version for each system. And yeah, I've been cataloging this on my website as the best BIOS files to use for each system. There's no download links, of course, but copying pasting the name into Google will lead you right to where to download them. So it's very simple. And in a lot of cases, it will be on the Game Tech Wiki website if you just want to use that. 
But this will probably be your best resource if you want a bit more of a curated BIOS list. And I'm probably missing a lot of systems, so just let me know if I'm missing something that you care about. But I'm going to be honest, newcomers, you shouldn't have to care too much about this. Don't overthink it. Just get BIOS files, throw them into that RetroArch system folder or whatever emulator and go and play some games. That is really the minimum requirement here is you at least have one and you, off you go. Other than that, I think I did a pretty good job today as to explaining what BIOS files are, where to find them, what you do with them, all that sort of thing. But as always, I'm sure you'll let me know in the comments if I failed miserably. Don't forget to like and sub to help the channel grow. Come join me on the Discord to talk all about emulation. Support me on Patreon if you like my stuff. And hope you all have a good one.